Three words, telekinetic cursor control. Is your brain ready? It's a fact that our technology comes with the residue of our ancestors. Like the computer keyboard resembles a typewriter. Why? I mean, why does it look like a mixed up game of Boggle whenever I want to interact with my computer? Or the computer mouse? I'm dragging and dropping icons? That's like poking papers with a stick on a real desk. There is a revolution coming in human computer interactions and it's all going to amaze you. We don't need the keyboard. We don't need a mouse. All we need to do is enter the digital world directly. The computer mouse can move in only two dimensions, and it has just one basic action, the click. Our hands are at least three times better. I mean, they're three-dimensional. They move in three axes. That's six degrees of freedom. So we just keep track of all six using something like wired up data gloves or 3D stereoscopic cameras. And then you add voice command, you've got a new command pathway. We already have voice recognition software that can understand us about as well as a wiretap operator. So the next step is to add natural language processing, which means that it won't just understand pre-programmed keywords, but everyday talk. All right, bring me back. Whew, tingles. Look, gesture and voice control have already reached the level where consumers have access to them, which you probably know if you've played with an Xbox Connect or ever tried to chat up a lady named Siri. The goal is to remove as many barriers between us and data as possible so that the interaction is natural. But I can think of something that's even faster than voice and gesture. Can you take a guess? I'm talking about the brain. All right, get this. Scientists are making batches of cyber monkeys capable of controlling computers with their brains. There, I said it. Now, this isn't just some sort of super villain plan to take over the world. In fact, it's nothing like that. It's actually really cool. Not only do we get a real understanding of the cerebral cortex of your average rhesus monkey, we also have learned how to create a translation algorithm so that they could control a cursor on a screen with their minds. And for humans, well, we've created neural implants that allow quadriplegics to do things that they haven't been able to do in years. By moving a robotic arm with their mind, they can do things like feed themselves, so that's pretty awesome. So if we can use our minds to move a cursor or a robotic arm, what happens in the future? Maybe we can use our minds to make a self-portrait, or we can type out a fan mail to Ray Kurzweil, we can create a playlist just by thinking about it. So much punk. This is what I'm talking about, removing those barriers, making it more natural to interact with our technology, making it organic so it's just the same as if you're cleaning a kitchen counter. Well, now you're cleaning your hard drive. Or throwing a ball. Well, now you're designing the next Hadron Collider. The possibilities are literally limitless. We can do anything we can put our minds to. That said, I'm out.